John Strangways, the British intelligence, SIS, station chief in Jamaica, is ambushed, killed, and his body taken by three assassins known as the Three Blind Mice. Not long after he is killed, a group of assassins invade his office, murder his secretary and steal several files, including those marked Crab Key and Dr. No. When MI6 in London is unable to hail Strangway's offices, they report the situation to their superiors. In response, MI6 agent James Bond, 007, is summoned to the office of his superior, M. Bond is briefed to investigate Strangway's disappearance, and to determine whether it is related to his cooperation with the American Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, on a case involving the disruption of Cape Canaveral rocket launches by radio jamming. M. calls in MI6's armorer to issue Bond a new sidearm. Bond's current sidearm, a Beretta model M1934, has been unreliable, despite Bond's attempt to defend his use of it for the last 10 years. On his last mission, it jammed and prevented him from defending himself, resulting in a lengthy hospital stay. The new pistol is a Walther PP, but erroneously called a PPK by the armorer, standard issue with the CAA. Bond still tries to pilfer his old pistol when he leaves but M catches him in the act. Upon his arrival at Kingston Airport, a female photographer tries to take Bond's picture and he is shadowed from the airport. He is picked up by a chauffeur, who Bond determines to be an enemy agent after calling his contact and confirming that they did not send the car to the airport. The driver takes off at a high rate of speed, presumably because he spots another car following them. Bond instructs him to leave the main road and holds the man at gunpoint. After a brief fight, Bond starts to interrogate the driver, who then kills himself with a cyanide-embedded cigarette. During his investigation Bond sees a picture of a boatman named Quarrel with Strangways. Bond locates Quarrel but finds him to be uncooperative when he interviews him. Bond also recognizes Quarrel to have been the driver of the car that chased him from the airport. Bond follows Quarrel and is about to be beaten by him and a friend when the fight is interrupted by the man from the airport who has been following Bond, he reveals himself to be CIA agent Felix Leiter and that not only are the two agents on the same mission, but also that Quarrel is helping Leiter. The CIA has traced the mysterious radio jamming of American rockets to the Jamaica vicinity, but aerial photography cannot find the exact location of its origin. Quarrel reveals that he has been guiding Strangways around the nearby islands to collect mineral samples. He also tells about the island of Crab Key, owned by the reclusive drive. No, who operates a bauxite mine which is rigorously protected against trespassers by an armed security force and low-scan radar. After finding a receipt in Strangway's house about mysterious rocks naming Professor R.J. Dent, Bond meets with Dent who says he had assayed the samples for Strangways and determined them to be ordinary rocks. This visit makes Dent wary, and he takes a boat to Crab Key where Dr. No expresses displeasure at Dent's failure to kill Bond and orders him to try again, this time with a large venomous spider. Bond survives and kills the spider. Bond becomes friendly with Dent's secretary, Miss Taro and agrees to meet her at her home in the hills above Kingston. While driving there, Bond is attacked by several men driving a large hearse. He is able to outmaneuver them, and the hearse is run off the mountain road, and explodes. When Bond shows up at Taro's house, she's surprised to see him, a fact that Bond notes easily. She goes into her bedroom and talks on the phone to her boss, who tells her to keep Bond occupied for a few hours. Bond and Taro spend that time in bed. Bond makes a phone call, ostensibly asking for a taxi but actually talking to the local police, who show up soon after and arrest Taro. Bond then sets a trap for Dent and waits for him to show. Dent steals into the bedroom and fires several silenced shots into the bed, which Bond rigged to look like it was occupied. Bond forces Dent to drop his pistol and begins to interrogate him about Strangways and his radioactive rock samples, which Dent tried to cover up. Dent is able to recover his pistol. 
Finding it empty, Bond coldly shoots him dead. Having detected radioactive traces in Quarrel's boat, where Strangway's mineral samples had been, Bond convinces a reluctant Quarrel to take him to Crab Key. Quarrel's apprehension is guided by a local legend that a fire-breathing dragon roams the forests and beaches of the Key. Bond scoffs at the idea and Quarrel agrees to take him there. On the beach there, Bond meets the beautiful Honey Rider, dressed only in a white bikini, who is collecting large conch shells. At first she is suspicious of Bond but soon decides to help him. When Bond asks her if she had her sail up all the way to the beach, she tells him that nose men have tried to catch her in the past but failed. A high-powered boat soon appears. Bond, realizing that Ryder's boat was detected by radar, has the three of them hide near the forest behind the beach. They are shot at, though the men on the boat cannot see them. Ryder leads them all inland to an open swamp. Though nose men track them with dogs, they are able to hide in a stream using reeds to breathe. When one of the men lingers behind, Bond kills him, much to Ryder's horror. As they continue upstream, they fail to notice a barbed wire fence and a large sign marking a danger zone. While taking a rest, Ryder tells Bond a little about her past, her father was a marine zoologist who went to Crab Key but never returned, presumably caught and murdered by No. The man who owned their house in Kingston had raped her and she took revenge on him, placing a black widow in his bed, leaving him to die slowly and painfully. After nightfall they encounter the legendary dragon of Crab Key which turns out to be a flame-throwing armored vehicle. In the resulting gun battle, Quarrel is incinerated by the flamethrower whilst Bond and Honey are taken prisoner. Bond and Honey are decontaminated after radiation exposure and taken to quarters before being drugged with laced coffee. Later, while Bond is unconscious, someone with strange hands enters his room and watches him while he sleeps. Upon waking they are escorted to dine with Dr. No, a half-Chinese man with mechanical hands that replaced his own after a radiation experiment went awry. He reveals that he is a member of Spectre, Special Executive for Counterintelligence, Terrorism, Revenge, and Extortion, and plans to disrupt the Project Mercury space launch from Cape Canaveral with his atomic-powered radio beam. After dinner Honey is taken away and Bond is beaten by the guards. Bond is imprisoned in a holding cell but finds a way to escape through a vent. Disguised as a worker, Bond finds his way to the control center, a multi-level room full of high-tech instrumentation with an atomic reactor set into the floor, overseen by Dr. No from a command console. Bond overloads the nuclear reactor just as the American rocket is about to take off. Hand-to-hand -hand combat ensues between Bond and Dr. No with the scientist being pushed into the reactor's cooling vat, in which he boils to death, his steel hands making it impossible for him to get a grip to climb out. Bond then finds Honey in a room, bound to the floor with water slowly rising toward her head. The two escape in a boat just as the entire lair explodes. Their boat later runs out of fuel and they drift for a while before being found by Lighter and the Coast Guard. They throw Bond a rope and begin to tow him and Ryder back to shore, but Bond deliberately drops the rope, leaving them drifting again on the tide. 